scientists flooded one of the hottest places on Earth with ocean water. And within weeks, something started growing that shouldn't exist. We're talking about organisms that had been dead for thousands of years suddenly waking up. And no, this wasn't some sci-fi experiment gone wrong. This actually happened. Keep watching. Because what they discovered changes everything we thought we knew about life on other planets. Death Valley. The name alone tells you everything you need to know. Or does it? This place holds the record for the hottest temperature ever reliably recorded on Earth. 134 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 56.7 Celsius for everyone else. At that temperature, you can literally fry an egg on the ground. People have tried. It works. The valley sits 282 feet below sea level, making it the lowest point in North America. It's also one of the driest places on the planet, averaging less than two inches of rain per year. Some years, zero. Not a single drop. This is a place where the ground cracks from heat, where salt flats stretch for miles, and where everything looks like it was designed by someone who really hated the concept of water. But here's the thing. Death Valley wasn't always a death trap. Rewind about 10,000 years. The last ice age is ending, and Death Valley looks nothing like it does today. Picture this instead. A massive lake, over 600 feet deep, stretching across what's now some of the most hostile terrain in North America. Lake Manly, they called it. The lake covered roughly 600 square miles. That's bigger than Los Angeles. Fish swam in it. Birds migrated to it. Mastodons probably stopped by for a drink. It was, by all accounts, an actual place where things lived instead of died. Then the climate changed. The ice age ended. Temperatures rose. The lake started shrinking, and shrinking, and shrinking some more. Until one day, thousands of years ago, the last drops of Lake Manly evaporated into the merciless desert air, leaving behind nothing but salt, sand, and a whole lot of regret. Or so everyone thought. Fast forward to the 1960s. Scientists are getting really interested in extreme environments. Not just because they're cool to study, but because NASA has a crazy idea. They're thinking about Mars. And maybe Europa, one of Jupiter's moons. These places are harsh. Really harsh. If life exists there, it would have to be tough. Tougher than anything we typically think about. So where do you test theories about alien life? You go to the most alien-looking places on Earth. Antarctica, obviously the bottom of the ocean, and Death Valley, which at this point is basically Earth's way of cosplaying as Mars. Enter the U.S. Geological Survey. In 1969, they decided to run an experiment that sounds absolutely insane. They wanted to know what would happen if they brought ocean water to Death Valley. Not a little bit. We're talking millions of gallons. The goal was simple, yet profound. Could ancient microorganisms, dormant for millennia, come back to life? There's this concept in biology called cryptobiosis. They shut down all metabolic activity. No eating, no reproducing, nothing. They're not dead, but they're not exactly alive either. They're just waiting, waiting for conditions to improve. Certain organisms can do this. Tardigrades, those microscopic water bears everyone loves, are famous for it. Some bacteria can form spores that last for thousands of years. Seeds can remain dormant for centuries, but could an entire ecosystem restart after 10,000 years? That's what these scientists wanted to find out. The logistics alone were mind-boggling. You can't just back up a truck full of ocean water and dump it in Death Valley. Well, you could, but that's not very scientific. They needed to do this properly. They selected a specific location in the valley, an area where geological surveys suggested Lake Manley had once been deepest. The salt deposits there were thick, really thick. Layers upon layers of ancient lake bed compressed into the earth. They started pumping in 1969, 5 million gallons of seawater from the Pacific Ocean. To put that in perspective, an Olympic swimming pool holds about 660,000 gallons. They dumped the equivalent of more than seven Olympic pools into the desert. The water came in trucks, day after day, week after week. Locals thought they'd lost their minds. And honestly, fair. The water spread across the designated area, creating a temporary lake about six feet deep at its center. In the blazing Death Valley sun, you'd think it would evaporate almost immediately. And it did start evaporating fast, but not as fast as you'd expect. 
The scientists had calculated this. They knew they had a window, a brief window. Within 48 hours, something started happening. Previously crystal clear, started turning cloudy. At first, the researchers thought it was just sediment stirring up from the ancient lake bed. But when they took samples under a microscope, they saw something that made them do a double take. Movement. Tiny organisms were swimming around. These weren't bacteria that had hitched a ride from the ocean. The DNA analysis proved that. These were species that hadn't been seen anywhere else on Earth. They were endemic to this exact spot. They'd been sleeping under the salt and sand for thousands of years. And now, with water present again, they'd woken up. In a good way. Academic papers were hastily written. Colleagues were called. More water was pumped in to extend the experiment. Because what happened next was even more incredible. Within a week, a greenish tint appeared in the water. Algae. Not just any algae, but species that analysis suggested had been dormant since Lake Manly dried up. These microscopic plants had been waiting in the form of hardy cysts, protective shells that could withstand thousands of years of heat, salt, and absolute desiccation. The moment water returned, they germinated. Algae meant photosynthesis. Photosynthesis meant oxygen production. Oxygen meant the potential for more complex life. By week two, tiny brine shrimp appeared. Now brine shrimp are famous for their resilient eggs. You can buy them as sea monkeys. Their eggs can remain viable for years, even decades. But these weren't modern brine shrimp. Genetic testing showed they were an ancient variant, closely related to modern species, but with distinct differences. They'd been in suspended animation for millennia. The shrimp started reproducing. The algae kept spreading. Within three weeks, researchers counted 17 different species of microscopic life in the temporary lake. 17 in a place that had been completely dry for 10,000 years. But here's where it gets really weird. Some of the organisms they found didn't match anything in the scientific record at all. New species, or maybe really, really old species that went extinct everywhere else and only survived here, frozen in time as dormant cysts and spores. One particular bacterium they discovered was unlike anything previously cataloged. It could survive in water with salt concentrations that would kill almost any other known life form. It could handle pH levels that were off the charts alkaline. And when the water started evaporating again, which it inevitably did, this bacterium didn't die. It transformed. It created a protective coating and went dormant again, ready to wait another thousand years if necessary. NASA scientists lost their collective minds over this. Because if life could do this in Death Valley, what could it do on Mars? Mars used to have water, lots of it, oceans, rivers, lakes. That water disappeared billions of years ago. But what if microbial life there did the same thing? What if right now, under the Martian surface, there are organisms just waiting for water to return? The implications were staggering. It meant that life could be far more resilient than anyone imagined. It meant that planets we'd written off as dead might just be sleeping. It meant that the search for extraterrestrial life needed to expand its definition of where life could exist. The Death Valley experiment continued for six weeks before the water finally evaporated completely. The desert reclaimed its territory. The salt flats returned. The temperatures climbed back above 120 degrees. And once again, Death Valley looked dead. But everyone involved knew better now. They knew that beneath their feet, locked in the ancient soil, an entire ghost ecosystem was waiting. Dormant, but not gone. The experiment was repeated in 1977 with even more detailed monitoring equipment. The results were consistent. Ancient life could be resurrected with nothing more than water. The organisms that appeared weren't contamination. They weren't hitchhikers. They were locals. Residents of Death Valley who'd been on the world's longest pause. But here's something that doesn't get talked about enough the speed of the resurrection. These organisms didn't gradually wake up over months or years. They snapped back to life in hours, some within minutes. That's not how modern biology typically works. When you freeze cells and thaw them, they often die because ice crystals damage their internal structures. But these ancient organisms had figured out something different, a way to essentially turn off and turn back on without damage. Scientists call this an hydrobiosis when it involves desiccation rather than freezing. The organism removes almost all water from its cells, 
replacing it with special sugars that protect cellular structures. When water returns, these sugars dissolve, the cells rehydrate, and boom, back in business. But doing this successfully for 10,000 years? That's impressive. That's next level impressive. Current research is now focused on understanding the exact mechanisms these organisms use. Because if we can figure out how they do it, we could potentially apply those same techniques to preserve human cells, organs, even whole organisms for long duration space travel. Imagine astronauts entering a state of suspended animation for a journey to Mars or beyond. Science fiction? Maybe not anymore. Death Valley might hold the key. There's another layer to this story. In 2015, scientists discovered that Lake Manley didn't just evaporate gradually. Analysis of sediment cores showed that it went through multiple cycles of filling and drying over thousands of years. Sometimes it would fill during particularly wet periods, only to dry out again during droughts. Each time the organisms would wake up, reproduce, and then go dormant again when the water disappeared. This means these species weren't just surviving one long dry spell. They were surviving dozens, maybe hundreds of dry spells, each one potentially lasting decades or centuries. They'd been playing the ultimate game of biological roulette, betting that eventually, enough water would return for them to pass their genes to the next generation before the lake dried up again. The youngest sediment layers showed evidence of this cycle happening as recently as 2,000 years ago. And then, nothing. The last time Lake Manly filled naturally was around the time the Roman Empire was at its peak. Since then, Death Valley has been waiting. The organisms have been waiting. Until 1969, when humans decided to hit the reset button. Today, Death Valley remains a hot spot for astrobiology research. The valley is often used as a testing ground for Mars rovers and other planetary exploration equipment. If your robot can handle Death Valley, it might survive the Red Planet. Scientists still collect samples from areas where Lake Manly once existed, searching for new extremophile organisms that could teach us more about the limits of life. And every so often, Death Valley surprises everyone by briefly coming back to life on its own. In 2005, the valley received unusual rainfall. Several inches fell over just a few days. Temporary pools formed in the lowest areas. And within weeks, wildflowers bloomed across the usually barren landscape. Millions of them. Seeds that had been dormant for decades germinated all at once, creating what locals called a super bloom. The desert, painted in yellows and purples, attracted visitors from around the world who came to see Death Valley look. Well, not dead. But those were plants with seeds built to wait decades. That's a different magnitude of patience. That's biological time travel. It just needs ideal conditions occasionally even if that occasionally means once every few thousand years. Organisms can develop strategies to wait out the bad times, no matter how long those bad times last. This has profound implications beyond just Mars. Europa, that moon of Jupiter we mentioned earlier, is covered in ice. But beneath that ice, there's likely an ocean, an ocean that's been liquid for billions of years, kept warm by tidal forces from Jupiter's immense gravity. Based on what happened when scientists pumped ocean water into Death Valley, is yes, life can wait, life can survive, life finds a way. But unlike the movie version of that phrase, it's not about life being aggressive or constantly evolving. Sometimes, life's greatest trick is knowing when to hit pause, when to shut down everything non essential and just endure, when to turn patience into a survival strategy. Five million gallons of ocean water, a valley named for death. Life persists in forms we're only beginning to understand. Makes you wonder what else is out there. Just waiting for the right conditions to wake up. Hit that subscribe button, because there's a lot more where this came from.